All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over today's NHL slate and displaying my first uh, attempt to share both of these screens at the same time, or both these windows at the same time, which is already a huge step up in the technology game of Eric Sheets Haber. Um, so with NBA being a three-game 10 p.m. slate, uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time on the NHL today, that be a, uh, excuse me, that being a very, very big slate. Um, so what I did was I put up on the left, the, uh, projections, which are only available on, uh, true DFS, um, for premium members. Um, but every once in a while, I'll do a free video where I display them just to, I guess, flex, I suppose, um, just to show you guys what you get when you are premium members. Um, and what I've done is I have sorted this as usual by sheets value score, which is kind of a. I don't want to use pro the, pro the word proprietary and make it sound so smart, but let's just say it's my own uh, way of, of, of valuing uh, fighters, players, uh, football players, basketball players, whatever, in their DFS uh, projections versus their salary versus their upside versus their points per dollar versus all of that stuff. And I find this is a really useful way to, to rank these players that kind of that have different salaries. Okay. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll rank them all by, by sheets value score. And when you're hand building lineups, what you want to do in hockey more than almost any other sport is to try to find a situation where guys from the same team are kind of projected well, you know, because hockey correlates so violently um, uh, with each other. Hockey players correlate so violently with each other is on the same team that you do want to stack as much as humanly possible. Um, now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to do two looks at this slate. One is just from a hand building perspective when we're using the projections. And then we're going to bring in Sabersim to, uh, to, uh, to build a lineup for us or several lineups for us. So we're going to see what the hand built lineup might look like versus what the Sabersim lineup might look like. So the first thing you'll notice kind of right off the bat is that there is a whole bunch of Winnipegs right in the top. So I, you don't get this all too often, but look at the top of the top 10 values. One, two, three, four of them are from Winnipeg. So let's start our process with that reality. So why don't we just put all these guys in just, just as I like to say, just for funsies, we'll put uh, Sheffle, and forgive my pronunciation, Dubois, Kyle Connor, who always seems, seems to show up as a good play, by the way, uh, Gagne, and was it, was this four? Yeah. So when you're starting with already with four Winnipegs, you're already in, in tremendous shape because you, you, you normally want to either do four threes five twos or six zeros. Um, so when you're starting with four really, really good plays, it makes the rest of your life really, really easy. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, you could just blindly play other Winnipegs from the lines that these guys are on. And look, you'll have to do your research to figure out what, what lines they are. You could use Saberson to do that. You could use any content provider to do that. Um, but uh, this is a, a really, really strong start to what is a very, very big slate. Um, what else can we kind of derive from this? Now, the next thing I will notice is that the top value goalie happens to be really cheap. And I really like that. Um, I, I really like playing cheap goalies. So I will, for now, put in Georgiev in the lineup. So already we have like a nice little shell here. We have we have four Winnipegs, we have a good goalie, and just a matter of filling out the rest. So now let, let's gaze and, and see if there's anything else we can't kind of figure out. So I see this 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 Columbus dude, this Benstrom, is sitting right there as my second best value. And it listen, it should have come uh, it's not lost on me how strong of a play Kyle Connor is relative to the rest of the guys. I mean. You got a 12 point difference in value score between Connor and the next guy. 
And you actually do see that from time to time in hockey. And for me, I, I just assume, even though hockey is a very variant sport, I, I, I just assume not fade it and put it in there. Um, even if it meant using that as a one-off, um, I think those are really, really strong plays just based on my experience. So the, th the thing I would look for is to see if maybe we can get somewhat greedy and use like this Columbus guy with somebody else from Columbus. So let's put in, let's see. Where is Columbus? There he is. So we'll put in Bernstrom. Ooh, it looks like he's day to day. He will be a game time decision for Thursday's game against Montreal. He has a goal into the called to torn apart the AHL. Okay, so he is from the AHL. Um, and he's apparently probably looks like a really, really hot player. Um, so I had a feeling he's gonna be probably pretty popular if he in fact plays. So you gotta keep an eye on that as well. You look at this three games in the league, and he's got, you know, he already has a goal and assist and Seem, and he's apparently was doing really well in the AHL. So he's a probably really hot prospect. So it's probably going to be high owned. And, and make sure that you, you uh, well, I don't know. It looks only 7% right now. So you have to see if he's playing. Now, the other guys I'm seeing from Columbus is not that, not that much. So you have Goudreau. So be on the lookout for Bernstrom. If he's actually in, I think he's a really strong player. Um. Aside from other stacking possibilities, it just doesn't look like there's that much, right? I get Ovechkin kind of by himself. I don't see any other Washingtons even on the whole first page. I have Pasternak, and I don't have – I mean, I guess Bergeron is close enough where he could be considered a secondary stack. I'm a secondary player. You have Matthews totally by himself. Gallagher totally by himself. So I guess the next, and then you have these two Vegas guys, Eichel against Marchesol. So quite honestly, I mean, from a hand building type of analysis, this looks pretty easy. Okay. Here's another Columbus guy. So Boone Jenner. So now that we have another Columbus guy, we can start talking about Bernstrom. So we'll play, let's what, what if we did Bernstrom and either Goudreau or um, what should we call it? Uh, who did I say? Boone Jenner. And then what you'd want to do is for your next player, you would want to, because you're going to need a one off from someplace, you'd want to either turn this into a 5 2 from Winnipeg, like add another guy from Winnipeg, or and a third guy from 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 Columbus and turn it into a four three, um, and then obviously you'd have to be a defender. So what I would do is honestly just go and see what the lines are and see what the power play, you know, what the power play lines are and things like that, and just kind of fill it out that way. And we'll do that when we do the Saberson build in a few minutes. But then just to kind of totally fill it out, let's if we need a defenseman, we got plenty of money, so let's look down and see who the top defensemen are. So you have. Latang, who shows up as there's Latang, and then there's Burns. But Burns is against our goalie, so we don't want to do that. So it looks like Latang. Ooh, look at this. We have Bjork, who's actually on Columbus. So now you can do it literally whatever you. I mean, now you could play, you could even, you could play the highest price defenseman on the slate if you want to do that. Or you can, you could upgrade your goalie if you wanted to do that. I mean, there's plenty of stuff you can do. But if you want to be kind of a little more pure, I mean, you play Latang here. Play Latang as your one off. And then you could have a $6,100 guy from Winnipeg. You could have even another $6,100 defenseman. You could do that too. Um, but you probably want that Columbus guy. So what I would probably do in this type of build is probably go back to that Columbus guy I mentioned, um, who was who was the Columbus defender that I mentioned before, Bjork. 
maybe, and then kind of move up somewhere else. So um, that's probably the way I would handle it. Is some kind of Winnipeg, some kind of Columbus as my main stacks. Okay, so now with that said, I wonder how Saberson would do that. Um, as a matter of fact, just to make sure, not exactly sure I'm getting this in my in my screen share. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute and then I'm gonna reshare. Yeah, the whole screen. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna upload my projections into Saber Sim. And I've done this so many times. You guys really should not do this by now. And then I'd be curious to know, we're gonna see, Okay, I have to make a note to do this. I have to change the spelling of this guy every single second. So I'm going to do that. Should I do it right now? I don't know where it's coming from. I'm getting this Alexander with the, with the wrong spelling. We could change it here. So let's players. And let's build, I don't know, 30. We'll build 30 lineups. We'll use the 150 max uh, settings. Let's build, you know, let's build 150. We got nowhere to go. Doesn't take that long anyway. And I wonder how much Winnipeg and or Columbus we'd get. Now, usually you either get 100, I mean, a bunch, or sometimes you just get zero. It's very strange sometimes with uh, Sabersim's a fickle beast. So, like I said, uh, oh, in this particular case, they are loading you up with all these guys. Wow. That doesn't happen all too often, especially when you set it to the 150 max. So it looks like my instincts were right, that Winnipeg and Columbus look to be the nuts tonight. As a matter of fact, when I look at the team stacks here, wow, they are dominating the board. And with, it's so funny, and the, and, the, and the Vegas guys who I said were just on the outside looking in, they're the next one. So I am stoked about this slate. Um, the one thing I would encourage you to do um, – is to um which call it keep on the lookout for Bernstrom. You know, make sure that he's playing before you do anything. I'm curious what kind of stack types they give me. Yeah, a bunch of five twos, four threes. If I were playing 150, I'd probably knock out the four twos. I mean, the fight, the, the, the slate's so big that I'd want to have full stacks. Um, I would limit it to five twos, four threes, and sixes. Um so I think that's what I'm going to end up doing, and what I'll do, I'll probably do a um, a, um, a review of this in the live before lock section, which is going to be probably six o'clock tonight. With any luck, maybe I will get uh, some update on that uh, on that Bernstrom uh, at that time. But overall, pretty uh, pretty uh, revealing and pretty straightforward approach to the slate. Now again, this doesn't include ownership situations. But from what I'm seeing right now, I mean, not all these Winnipeg guys are that high owned. So we shall see. Uh, good luck, everybody. And if you show up for live, I'll see you at six.